The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And we are live. So again, um, welcome everybody to the January 27th General Board Meeting of Community Board 12 of the Bronx. My name is Dr. Michael Burke, and I am your chairman of Community Board 12. Let me be one of the last people to wish you a happy new year um, as this month has gone on. Hopefully, you've had a good year so far. You've stayed healthy and you stayed safe. The intention was, of course, to have this meeting at the new YMCA, but unfortunately, this insidious virus has kept us from doing that. But in the meantime, we're still meeting with you virtually, and hopefully you're getting a chance to participate with uh, what we're doing here in the Community Board 12s. If anything, stay safe and get vaccinated. For those of you that are paying attention to us on Bronx uh, Net Channel 67, uh, Fios, I don't quite know the channel that we're on on Fios, but we're also streaming live on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Welcome to our January 2022 meeting of Community Board 12. Um, before we begin, um, I would like to ask that we say the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to ask that we um, unmute ourselves, if we can do this in unison, and say the Pledge of Allegiance. And so I ask that we now say, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation, one nation, one Thank you, thank you, thank you. That wasn't uh, that bad at all. So let me mute everybody again. And so that way we can begin. So tonight, well, before we begin, I would like to um, do a couple of things. I would like for us to think about the victims of the fire that took place um, off 181st Street in the Bronx, the, uh, I want to say the Twin Parks building. I like for us to think about those individuals that are in need of shelter in our prayers. And I'd also like to thank um, and of us to pray for the two officers that succumbed to their injuries via the events that took place um, a couple of days ago. Those two officers had their entire lives in front of them, and yet um, they did what they wanted to do, which was to protect us. The community at large and so you know we thank them for their sacrifice and to know that they are in a better place so i'm gonna do this because we're gonna i'm gonna move this expeditiously just offer a quick opening prayer by saying dear lord we thank you for this day we thank you for waking us to see this day lord we thank you that as we get ready to continue the business of community board 12 in bronx that you bless us with wisdom and insight, but more importantly, Lord, with empathy in order to be able to conduct the business that we need to conduct. Lord, we ask that you keep everybody safe today, tomorrow, and always. And we ask this in your son, Jesus. Yes, sir, and Amen. Amen. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we are going to open the public session. So the public session, of course, is an opportunity for members of the public to speak on anything that they would like to let us know about. So that section, again, is normally run by the first vice chair, which in this case is Mrs. Jerry Bennett. However, like I said, even though she's going to be running this, I'm going to be watching the clock, uh, which is normally done by our second vice chair, but I'm going to be helping them because we really need to move things along. So you're going to be on a strict three minute time limit, that, that is your limit, three minutes. If you go over the three minutes, I'm just gonna mute you, okay? And we do not want that. So please be mindful because we have quite a bit of business 
to get to this evening. And so for the public session, if you want to comment on what you just heard in the public hearing, you can do that. If you want to let us know what events that you have going on, you can do that. If you just want to say that we at Community Board 12 are great people, you can do that as well. So nonetheless, we just want to say those three minutes are yours three minutes. Then right after that, we're going to go into the vote that we just heard um, at the public hearing um, a couple of minutes ago. And so to that, I'm going to turn this over to our first vice chair, Mr. Jerry Bennett. Uh, Madam First Vice Chair, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome and Happy New Year to you all. I hope all of you are being safe. So for this Community speak session, I'm going to ask if you do want to speak, you can raise your hand. You can look down into your, um, look on your computer and you'll find a reactions button and there you can um, press to raise your hand to speak. Okay, so that's the pretty much the format that I will go. So what I see right now is Leticia, Leticia Stewart. That is the first person. Leticia Stewart. I am here. Thank you so much, Eugenia. Okay, good. Thank you. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Happy New Year to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. Just wanted to make some announcements. My name is Leticia Stewart. I'm the executive director over at Iowa's Girls and Boys International. And we just have some things upcoming that we wanted to let you know about. Uh, so, of course, we all know, as you mentioned, that COVID has been a huge problem for everybody uh, across the board. Uh, but there's definitely been some varying opinions in terms of system mandated protocols, uh, whether it's the government issuing CDC, healthcare agencies, or education administrators. Uh, and vaccine is definitely one of those topics that have elicited a range of emotions and opinions from people. Um, and, you know, despite the constant promotion of getting the vaccine done and changing regulations uh, to require the vaccine, there's still hesitancy, you know, amongst people in our community uh, to go ahead and take the vaccine. So our organization is really trying to make an effort to understand kind of where those variances are coming from uh, in terms of vaccine confidence. And so we're going to be launching a new study uh, to really understand what those complexities are around uh, the COVID vaccination process and acceptance uh, as it exists within our community. Uh, so we're actually going to be seeking the community's input and participation uh, in order to, you know, get as many responses as, po as possible to the survey that we put out. Uh, so we'll make sure to share that survey link with the community board in the hopes that all of you will either participate in the survey or share it with your networks. Uh, some other things that we have coming up that I wanted to inform you about. Uh, of course, we all know that February is Black History Month. Uh, so we're going to be having, uh, in, as part of our activities, uh, we'll be doing like a movie event. So uh, that leads up to a very informative panel discussion. So we'll be doing kind of three weeks of movie viewing. Uh, and the panel is really going to focus on highlighting the struggles and the triumphs of Black males. So uh, I will make sure to get everyone the information on that. Uh, so hopefully everyone will be able to join and again, share with your uh, networks. Uh, we also are going to be celebrating the wonderful diversity that exists within the Black community at our Free to Be Me virtual showcase uh, mm -hmm. that will be taking place on Saturday, February 19th uh, at 2 p.m. So you'll get to see a selection of our students show off their artistic talents at this wonderful event. I uh, also wanted to let you guys know about our in-school program. So uh, iRACE has been offering in-school support uh, for children's mental health services uh, for a number of years now uh, using evidence-based therapeutic models. And uh, as you may know, school counselors and school social workers are often overwhelmed trying to accommodate uh, all the students that are in need of support. And since this pandemic, we've definitely uh, noticed that there's been an uptick in the number of children that need support. Um, and since the pandemic and also in response, we've actually expanded our service uh, to include more group work and also to provide supports for parents and educators. So if you happen to know a school uh, that might 
be able to uh, benefit from additional SEL. 30 and seconds, Ms. Stewart. Support. <laughs> oh, no problem. Uh, please let us know. And uh, lastly, uh, we mentioned before our See Her, Be Her coaching program for young Black girls. Uh, we are always looking for young ladies to participate and also looking for strong Black women uh, that are interested in mentoring and uh, being coaches to these young girls. So I will definitely put my name uh, and contact information in the chat. And again, we'll make sure to share information about all of these programs uh, with the community board. So I thank you all for your time and for listening. And I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. All right. So I see that uh, Miss Patricia McDowell, she didn't see the button. No, or... I did not. <laughs> okay, Thank for you. raising her hand. So Thank Patricia McDowell? Yes. Okay, yes. Good evening, Good evening um, committee members. Um, I am representing the 3128 Exton Avenue Home Owners Association. I would like to speak on the property located at 3300 Palmer Avenue in the Bronx, known as the Palmer Court Apartments. I am joined with my president, Bernice Simmons, and other homeowners. I would like to bring to your attention the potential hazard and unsightly conditions this property causes to our community. The custodian of the property on an ongoing basis leaves piles of garbage and sometimes mattresses on the corner of the New England Thruway and wraps around to Gibbons Avenue. As a result, pedestrians are forced to walk out in the street where there is a blind spot to those um, vehicles flying around the corner on the service road of the New England Thruway. This can potentially cause injury, I'm sorry, cause the injured person to experience personal injuries, pain and suffering, emotional distress, medical and hospital bills, and loss of earnings to those people who are walking to the bottle distribution center. The trash pile up is an environmental issue which attracts rodents and other wildlife to the surrounding area. This property is cut constantly leaving a pile of uncovered mattresses, which can further create the bed bug issue within the community. On December 3rd, 2010, New York City passed a law which reads, you must seal any mattress or box springs in a plastic bag before you put it out with regular trash for bulk collection. This rule will prevent um, the spread of bed bugs. I am sure that if you look at other properties that this owner owns or manage, the conditions are extremely different. The sad thing about the situation, this would not be an issue in other com communities. It is my understanding that numerous complaints has been issued concerning this property. We as a community are requesting that this property owner not only be fined, but all permits pertaining to this property and other properties that they may own in New York City be denied, all government fundings should be denied, tax breaks should be suspended and denied as well. And I have photos if you want me to share of the property. And on the side note, I would also would like to comment about the property that's being um, considered for rezoning on 80 Avenue. Um, as a uh, homeowner on Edson Avenue, I agree with Mr. Uh, Figueroa that they should um, table this discussion in terms of not vote on this property until so we are clear about the um, the zoning and also clear about the the height of the building. I think the property should be only, um, that particular process should only be zoned and not the community. I would like to thank you for your time and I have photos if you'd like me to um, submit them. Okay, all right. All right, so I guess all the information that you mentioned is taken by um, all the persons that can actually address that information or get back to you. Yes, George. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little confused. Are you, you called and said you were speaking on behalf of the homeowners on Edson Avenue or on Hunter Avenue? No, no, we're on Edson Avenue. We're the 3100. Um, homeowners Association. Okay, so, you know, these issues are complicated, and this is an important point for my board members. Okay. You're proposing that we reject 
although we don't have a vote for 3300 Palmer Avenue this evening, um, the issue is, if, is that if they do not receive the tax credit going forward, they will impose raises on rental, the people who live there, not you, mm-hmm. but the people that live there, uh, rent increases towards the 4%. Mm-hmm. And you're cool with that. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, what are we talking about? Somebody raising someone's rent or, or, or saving someone's life? I, I, the the thing that we're having the the reason that this is complicated is because as a community board, I feel it's our responsibility to be straightforward and honest with everybody and have that. these and have these types of debates. Mm-hmm. There is no sidewalk on Bowler mm-hmm. Avenue. You are absolutely right. They do not containerize their garbage. I was there this morning. There was a homeless encampment that was removed on the ramp on I-95 today, right by the corner of Bowler and and, um, Given Avenue. That's the corner right there of Bowler and Given. They are doing a better job, and and they have been violated by sanitation and the Department of Health uh, for rat sightings. So, again, this this is not as easy, or we should not be as chalant as saying, yeah, I'm okay with the people who live there because we don't know what their financial situation is. If we don't vote for a tax break for them, then their rent goes up. Now, again, for some people, that's okay. I, I don't know. I really want to hear from the tenants there. But I also, we have questions that we submitted to the Department of HPD that we're waiting on a response from because to your to your to to all the issues that you raise it's not an easy issue and it's not as black and white as people make it out to be because we don't want to be supportive of a tax and a tax break if they're not going to clean up their act part of the incentive for the tax break is that they should partner up with some uh, uh i don't know how they i don't know what it is a, a landlord service or somebody that actually knows how to containerize the trash and deal with the trash. And those are some of the things that we're considering. But until we get a response from HPD, you know, that's why we're, you know, we're, we're holding off on making a recommendation to the councilman's office on this issue. But, you know, that's where we're at. I appreciate that. And again, um, perhaps we don't target that particular area, but if they have a property, maybe it's in a better area and they need permits, maybe those permits can be denied until they actually address What's happening at Palmer Avenue? Got it. Robert Thanks. Hall, Mr. Hall. Yeah, George. I was just going to suggest, for the sake of transparency, because I know what we know, and I don't believe the Edson Avenue crew knows what our previous discussion was regarding this. So I don't know if they fully understand the scenario. But if we can all, for the sake of transparency, get together and, and call it a neighborhood advisory gathering or something of that nature, we can we can iron this out. Because I know what you're saying. I know what has already transpired. And I don't believe that this group knows what transpired or what you're referring to. So we, we need to, you know, be a little more transparent. That's all. I, 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 and I realize the, the, the sensitivity of this. OK. Let me, let me comment, if I may, just quickly, Mr. Hall. So I think the one thing that we do try to do is to be transparent. So, Ms. McDowell, what I'm going to invite you to do yeah. is to go back to the land use committee meetings because all, all of our meetings are recorded. So if you go back to the, to the December meeting, it's on our YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm going to presume that you're tech savvy. Um, if you go to our YouTube yeah. channel, you can see um, our December land use committee meeting as well as our January meeting. Now, in all transparency, I did because the councilman actually called me last week and said, Dr. Burke, when are you guys going to give me a recommendation? And the plan was to do it this evening. But, you know, I do understand that we're waiting on something from HPD. And so I I want to be a man of my word. So I'm going to hold off a little longer. But I know the councilman wants to know what we think. I, You know, he said, well, what is unofficially? So I gave him my personal opinion. And I said, here is, you know, some under, you know, underlying content. But again, I, I do not want to speak for the board, and I made that perfectly clear to him. 
when I said that. So I just want to add that. So if I just please go back and look at December 2021 Land Use Committee in January 2022. Okay. Thanks, Mr. McDowell. Uh, Thank and we will be open to have a Zoom meeting with our community, if you like. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sydney Blair. Oh, I was just going to add on to what Dr. Burke said, um, just uh, to address what Mr. Hall was saying in terms of us being um, transparent as a board. Um, as Dr. Uh, just to add on, um, this building, this co-op, has been on the board's radar for a while. Um, it's been a topic of discussion, as Dr. Burke just said, in the last couple of land use meetings. Um, and I think even the housing, one of the two of them, I'm on both committees, so it gets a bit jumbled in my head. But um, we have been discussing this and we have been getting complaints to the general board meetings regarding this property. Actually, since sometime last year, I remember um, when the first initial complaint came in, uh, not many people on the board actually knew where that place was. And I you know, took actually drove by myself, took a picture, sent to George, sent to Dr. Burke, and they forwarded it to sanitation. So I just wanna let Ms. McDowell know that we agree with you. We want the trash to be resolved we want that area to be cleaned up but we also have to think of our fellow neighbors okay okay all right so is there anyone else who wants to speak in community speaks i don't see any other hands raised moses i thought i had mine uh Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Moses. I guess I'm not computer savvy. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, two, two issues. Um, they are, one of them, well known to our area. It is the tractor trailers uh, in our community. And the most recent dis discussions have been centered around 238th Street. And uh, at least two of the um, community precinct council meetings since we started after the pandemic the deputy, uh, well, the inspector, 47th Precinct, uh, indicated that a plan is underway to identify an area for the tractor trailers to park. Now, this has been going on for years, but what he said at this beginning of this meeting, that Community Board 12 has been tasked with looking at or identifying an area where these uh, uh, that could be considered for the tractor trailers to park. So I wanted to just bring that, uh, you know, for 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 some feedback from from the from the board. The other one, again, another long-standing problem, uh, is on Baychester Avenue between East 241st Street and Camp Street. There is, in my estimation, a Claire Automotive repair shop. Have been going on there for many years, and multiple encounters have been been attempted to deal with that issue through 311, the 47th precinct. That location is getting worse. So, um, uh, and so I guess what I might be asking at this stage, um, community board 12 support in this effort. Uh, communications have been gone to. I mean, have been sent to. Uh, some of the elected official, the response has been really nil to nothing to some degree, in my estimation. So I want to make sure that these uh, stay on somebody's uh, radar because this thing is just, just uh, well, well, we know the result. So I'll close out with that and hear some thoughts. Okay. So just to mention Angela Connolly, who is here on the meeting, she is a member of Senator Biagi's constituent services team, and she has her information in the chat. So um, she can be contacted as far as those particular issues are concerned. All right. So in the meantime, I'm going to ask George. Thank you, Ajiria. So um, Moses is right. Um, I don't know that we've been tasked 
We are part of a conversation. Um, Cynthia Prisco um, also put her information in the um, chat there. Uh, Cynthia Prisco works in Council Member Kevin Riley's office, and I had a conversation with her and Jamal Yap in regards to identifying some sites within the district. Now, we are still within the early stages, but I do know, and I don't want to speak for the councilman's office, that they're trying to move as expeditiously as they can in trying to identify this problem. Well, I shouldn't say identify the problem, trying to deal with um, uh, this problem. And that is creating some sort of, I don't know how to categorize it, a rest stop or something, some place where trucks can park uh, overnight um, because we do have a lot of people who live within the district that are truck drivers and they park their streets along Baychester Avenue, 238th Street, Edson Avenue, the, the bus depot over here near Co-op City. I mean, this is a problem not just uh, germane to our community board. We have these concerns throughout the Bronx, Hunts Point in particular as well, community board too. Um, so collectively, this is something, and I know that when Council Member Riley posted this on Facebook or something, um, he actually got a response from another council member, like in the South Bronx, was like, hey, I want to work with you on this. So, again, I don't know if Cynthia wants any, has to add anything or wants to add anything, but we are working trying to, to resolve this issue because it is a very real problem for our district. Um, and it's an overwhelming problem. And, you know, I don't want people to think that we're not addressing it or that the 4 7 precinct is not addressing it. It's just that this happens on a daily basis. That's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, All right. But the second, the second portion. Um, oh, I'll just add on that, uh, uh, Mr. Torres. We've talked about this. This has been going on. I don't think it is being uh, handled proactively. I can date you back to 2012. How long this has been going on, and we've gone through that. But you know, but okay. new, have new players now. But now, what about the uh, the location on Baychester Avenue? Yeah. The the, um, the repair, repair shop, shop, right? Say again. The repair shop you're referring to? That is correct. All right. Um, I'll follow up with you tomorrow. I don't want to get into the weeds here, but because um, there's other people that want to speak as well. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Robert Hall? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, um, I, I just remember reading something to the effect that uh, George Torres deserved a lot of kudos because he indicated we need to build something there in the best interest of this problem. Okay. Uh, it has been going on for quite some time. Uh, Mr. Moses is correct. Uh, 2012 was about the time it was, it was at its hiatus. But um, no one has directly addressed this. And okay. unless something is built or we have an area that's large enough to encompass all of these vehicles, it would take care of all of the neighborhoods, all of them. Baychester, Barnes Avenue, everywhere. Okay, so we we we're still in the weeds trying to research that. All right. So I do see I have John Isaac, and then I have Cynthia Prisco from Kevin and Riley's office. Um, we are trying to keep it for community speaks. <laughs> Let's hear from the community. Is there anybody else from the community? This is John's sister, if you don't mind. I'm this is who? John Isaac's sister. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm just tapping in. Um, okay. A, a serious concern. On White Plains Road, along 232nd and White Plains Road, daily, on a daily basis, there's a supermarket that's offloading and unloading trucks where there are local bus stops for children boarding the yellow buses in which the buses and the travelers have to commute on the oncoming traffic side, which jeopardizes the safety of people crossing the streets and cause traveling along the thoroughway of White Plains Road. Okay. So my concern is the safety as well as the, uh, the children boarding the buses in the morning. There's a local bus stop right there, 232nd. There's another one that's located at 231st on White Plains Road. Mm. The trail is double parked on both sides of the street. They're triple parked, actually. All right. So for the safety of the commuters out there, the buses, the, 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 the people walking to work, where is that leaving us as far as safety is concerned? That's true. That It sounds like um, Department of Transportation. I'll turn to Pamela. Hi, Miss Pamela Hamilton. How are you? Yes. 
Pamela ha Hamilton Johnson. This one I just asked told you that you is truly an honorable pa woman. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, hear me. we can barely hear you. You have to speak okay, up. Okay, can I talk? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna talk a little louder because I uh, um shared an issue box has been an issue for a while and I really had a chance about it. Like why have a copy? Adding up going in and out, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Yeah, you okay. are going in and out. Can you hear me? No, we can't hear you very clear. Don't worry about it. You may have to, you know, log out and come back in because we really can't hear you very clearly. Um, maybe you could put into the chat some of what you have to say. Okay. So Here that we, are. yes. Uh, um, Johnny Goff. You, the young lady who spoke from the community prior to Ms. Johnson, I agree with her because I take that route sometimes when I'm in the morning and the, 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 the school buses are with the children loading on and loading off have made a complaint to one of the schools. And I'm not calling the school's names as yet, but she is absolutely right. The yes. safety, I have stopped on the corner and parked and watch how those children are having very difficulty getting on and off those school yellow buses in the morning. And it's a tragedy that if something goes wrong. I don't know if I ever see a crossing guard in that area. I could be wrong because I'd be on the opposite side. But the young lady who spoke about it, it is very, very serious. And it should really be taking a serious look at it. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I think the school buses have telephone numbers on them, like you can call to make the complaints. They don't. They don't. All right. So, I mean, we'd have to have somebody to come out to look at the traffic situation right there. And that's something that we could look at um, and take up at, at another point, you know? So, I don't see... Adina, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? This Who's is Pamela. This? Can you hear me better? Oh, yes. yes. We can hear you, Pamela. Okay. So I, w I just, just want to add to Moses' point. That, that has been an issue in reference to the tractor trailers. But when I yeah. gave it further thought, I'm thinking, why do we want to have all of that exhaust in a designated place in our community? There are other communities that don't have it. So, I, you know, you have to be really careful, you know, what you ask for. Because when you ask for that truck stop, you're asking for um, exhaust um, and, and things in the environment. That's all I wanted to say with that. Okay. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. All right. So for the Community Speaks, we know that there's an issue as far as school buses are concerned. We are going to have to address that. Um, but for right now, I would the say... Virginia Sanders? Who? Virginia Sanders, I can't get my hand up. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I noticed that 241st and White, um, on 241st Street, up and down from Furman to Barnes, where the bus stop is, is getting very dirty and nasty again. Mm -hmm. uh, they're starting to put stuff behind that fence again like crazy. You know, yes. I'm pretty sure we had it cleaned up before, but now it looks just as bad as it did previously. Yes. <clears throat> you never know when a breakdown can strike. Okay. It was all the way from Barnes to Furman. Okay. Where right, the bus so stop if is. We just get the addresses and the locations, and you could just write them down. You could send them in to George, I guess. And, um, you know, like sanitation, we'll take that up and then at some other point. I'm sure that, you know, we have a sanitation issue across the Bronx. <laughs> it's all over the Bronx. It is just a growing issue. And um, I think it's going to be addressed. All right. Okay. Just wanted to inform you. Okay. Thank you. 
All right. Um, John Isaac. Yes, I'm sorry. I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying to you in regards to the school buses. It's uh -huh. not the buses that's obstructing the traffic. There's a supermarket located at that corner. Yeah. There are trailers, multiple trailers obstructing the road. Okay. During rush hour. Not only is it obstructing the road and the safety for people crossing the street, but it's also a thoroughfare to our local hospital. In uh -huh. which ambulances are not able to pass in the event of an emergency. So it's not the buses are the problem, it's the tractor trailers. Okay. So they can reschedule and find a different way or time frame for the trailers to deliver to the local supermarket rather than during rush hour. Okay. All right. Again, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, I don't know as far as who would address that particular situation, you know, be, it just seems like, I don't know if George, you can answer who can address that particular situation for that supermarket. I mean, I did witness a, a um, school bus today and it was really the same thing. And it was around four or five o'clock today. No, about four o'clock today. And I saw a school bus that was having a hard time. And I said, wow, they can't, you know, let kids off the school bus at that time. It was like a little traffic jam that did happen at 233rd Street and White Plains Road. So I did witness this very same thing. So I see um, Alfredo. Okay, can I can I jump in for a second, Alfredo, before you answer that? Because George wants to answer the question. Guys, remember, we still have a lot of business to get to tonight. So the longer we do this, you know, the longer we're going to be here. So just remember that. No, no, I, I'll follow up with um, with John Isaac's um, uh, sister um, tomorrow. Um, White Plains Road is a very congested road. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to get into the weeds here. There is legislation before the city council for loading zones. We have not opined on that yet as a community board, uh, but that is a strategy um, that the city council is exploring about uh, putting loading zones in certain areas so that you can sort of deal with this issue. Okay. So with that, I'm going to close the community speak session so that we could move on and we'll go on to our next session. Thank you so much, everyone. Not a problem. Thank you, Madam First Vice Chair. So the public gallery session, community speaks, is closed. So the next item on the agenda is actually the vote. So for the land use Euler items that we have in front of us. And so before we do that, we need to take a roll call of all board members that are present. So board members, right? And this is where we're gonna turn this over to Madam Secretary. So I'm gonna tell you what she's gonna say because I'm gonna say it for you, for, all right? When you your name is about to be called, you know where your name is on the list, right? When your name is gonna be called, please unmute yourself, say your name and then mute yourself again. The more expeditious we do this, Again, the quicker we get out of here, right? It's because it's 8.49 now, right? And I'm trying to move this meeting along. So that's what Madam Secretary is going to say. And I'm sure that she appreciates me saying it for her. So let's not take all day like we can sometimes do, right? When you know your name is going to be called, unmute yourself, say your name, whether you're present or not, and then we move forward, all right? So she's going to call a roll before the vote. Madam Secretary? Judith Benitez, present. Egeria Bennett? Present. Sydney Blair. Present. Denise Bond. Present. Ivan Loras. Present. Carla Basati. Present. Michelle Brumfield. Present. Arlene Allen. Present. Victor Brown. Michael Burr. Present. Sadie Campbell. Present. Joan Claude. Present. Beatrice Coronel. Present. Colleen Dickerson. Present. Tashawn Dubois. Present. Kevin Eichelberger. 
Present. Alfredo Figueroa. Present. Hannah Gepali. Present. Barbara Gibson. Present. Johnny Goff. Present. Robert Hall. Present. Present. Lisa Hayes. Present. John Isaac. Present. James Theodore. Theodore James. Present. Keisha Martin. Present. Alpha Lass. Paul Enzano. Present. Jerron Manzetta. Jerron Manzetta. Harang Mansonet. Thank you. Uh, Lucille Martin. Present. Uh, Shanika Moore. Present. Michael Clinton Mike. Present. Present. Gotcha. Carmen Ortiz. I know I saw her. Present. Thank you. Mr. Reed is excused. Dr. Dina Robbins. Jessica Samboy. Present. Harry Singh. Present. Paul Stricker. Present. Luke Zabados. Luke. Luke. Did we see him before? He was on before. Yeah, but he's not answering now. Okay. Deborah Torado. Present. Esther Yema. Esther Yema. We do have a call. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So uh, just about everybody's here. So with the vote that's going to come up, right? So this is pretty much your individual opinion, right? It doesn't matter what any of us think. What you need to do is vote your conscience. So you've heard the presentation. Um, I do believe this is coming from the land use committee. So I need to turn this over to Mr. Stricker for a, a recommendation, if I'm not correct. Right. And then, you. You're correct. Is that, well, I, well, let me as the committee, I don't think has not issued a vote for the land. Use no, committee. we haven't. Been. We're going to give it to the full board. Right. So how do you want to proceed, Mr. Stricker? Well, I'll read what it is and then we can turn it over to the full board for, uh, uh, you know, uh, an action to pass the request or deny it. Okay, so Mr. Strickland, the floor is yours. We'll take a hold on. Yes, sir, the floor is yours. Okay, the first item up for grabs is ULERT number N2002290, Zebra Robin X ray, an application submitted for zoning map amending from M1 1 to R7D and 7 an R7D slash C24, a zoning amendment to Appendix 1 for affordable housing and zoning text amendment to append Appendix 1 to expand the transit zone to facilitate a new mixed use 150 unit building with commercial and community facilities uses and being sought by Marklin 4551 LLC located at 4541 Furman Avenue, Bronx, New York. Any comments, please? If not, what I'll is, take a motion. What is the land use recommendation? The well, land use recommendation I personally feel we should deny it, but that's you know that's my own personal feeling. The 
we didn't take a vote at the hearing because uh, we wanted the full board to t take the vote on it. But originally, the land use committee was opposed to it. Thank you, Mr. Stricker. That's what, we, what I needed. The land use committee was not opposed to it, Carl. That's your opinion. No, no. It was at the last meeting, and then we decided to go to the public hearing and let the board vote. We have up and we had opposition all time. Three times we met with them. We kept asking them to approve it, improve the, the parking, which they did to the best they say they can do. But the, uh, the lack of parking for this facility is very detrimental to the community. So let me hear a motion, please. Either to approve it or disapprove it. So moved. Are we are we voting to move to approve or are we? Well, either, yeah, it's a land use hearing. It's a very time constraint, so we have to vote on it tonight. So the board has their input. I I actually the way things were, I think people are confused. Um, 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 Mr. Chair, um, so we're going to do a vote to either say yes to approve or no to approve. I think that's that's how we should proceed. Right. That's, that's correct, but we need a motion to do that. That's what I, make I'm a I make a motion. I make a motion for this board to proceed with that uh, 4541 Furman to yes approve or no approve. So each board member either say yes to approve or no to approve. We have that's a second? second. I think, yeah, okay. That's somewhat confusing, Alfredo, but I get is what it, you're saying. If, if I can offer a friendly approved? amendment. If you're in favor, you write A. If you're negative, you write an A. Right, right. Because that, that, yeah, I think the way it was stated, it was somewhat you know confusing. Okay, right. So if you want it, yes. If you don't want it, no. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and that was a good that was a good recommendation, Alfredo. Right, that's great. Okay. All right, so I'm ready. Okay, to call for so the so I, sorry, this is Carla. So Alfredo made the motion to approve, correct? Yes. Yeah. No, no, well, Fredo made a motion to take a vote from the board, either yay or nay. Okay. They call the and rule. Okay. And who seconded? I've never heard anything like that. I don't know. Did we have a section? Second? We did. I thought I heard it from, uh, who was it? I second. I thought it was John Isaac, but I didn't, I didn't want to make certain. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. so Hall, now we have a section. Okay. So we need the roll call to find out what is... Uh, uh, Nay or yay? That is correct. I'm calling the calling the call. Before you, is there, is there any more unreadiness? Because I could have swore I saw somebody's hand up. Mr. Hall, do you have your hand up? No. All right. So call for the vote, Madam Secretary. Okay. Hi. Egeria Bennett? Aye. Sydney Blair? Nay. Denise Bond? Nay. Abstain. Paula Pasadi? Nay. Allen. Abstain. Victor Brown. Deacon Brown is excused and Brian Nor Norbert Brian is excused. Sadie Campbell. Sadie Campbell. That's crazy. Nay. Thank you. Joe Claude. Nay. Beatrice Cornell. Abstain. Colleen Dickinson. Nay. Kason Dubois. Nay. Kevin Eichelberger. Nay. 
Alfred Figueroa? I vote yes. I, yes. Okay, I got you. Hannah Gapali? Nay. Walter Gibson? Barbara Gibson? Nay. Johnny Goss? Johnny Goff. Nay. Robert Paul. Nay. Lisa Hayes. Nay. John Isaac. Nay. Theodore James. Nay. <laughs> Keisha Martin. Nay. Michael Lass. Paul Anzano. Nay. Sharon Manzet. Manzanet. Lucille Martin. Nay. Shanika Moore. Abstain. Clinton Mike. Yay. Carmen Ortiz. Carmen Ortiz. Carmen Ortiz. I'm trying to unmute, yes. Okay, thank you. Dr. Dina Robbins. Jessica Sandboy. Abstain. Harry Singh. Aye. Paul Stricker. Hey. Luke Sabados. Luke Zabados. Deborah Tirado. Um, abstain. Esther Yema. At a quick glance, it looks like the nays have it. But every abstain equals a no. Well, no. I, I, I didn't vote, Madam Secretary, oh, but I think you probably know where I'm following this. Dr. So, Burke, I'm sorry. No, that's Dr. okay. That, that, that's okay. Uh, no. So the motion is uh, denied that we do that we do not approve this at 41, excuse me, 4541 Furman Avenue. The rezoning request is denied by Committee Board 12. Okay. George? Yeah, I think this is a real unfortunate um, vote. And I think that this is a conversation that we need to have with the board because you have a lot of conversations that are not taking place in committee and that, you know, I've never suspected the community board of being anti-development, notwithstanding this issue or this particular project. What you're asking for is more homeless shelters. We're getting a homeless shelter on Furman Avenue one block away because this district is in zone one M11. What they're proposing is a, re a change of rezoning to an R7. You cannot build homeless shelters in an R7 district. You guys really need to understand what you're voting for and what you're not voting for. And parking, you hanging your hat on parking. I live in Co-op City. We have eight garages. Each of us pays for parking. Nobody in Co-op City pays for, you know, gets free parking. And I'm sure that people who live in buildings that have garages on the first floor also pay for that parking. So, again, notwithstanding this particular development, they were rezoning other blocks, other parcels of property on that block so that we could avoid having a homeless shelter. There is a men's homeless shelter one block away that will be opening within the year from this facility. And all you're stating by saying no 
is by, that we're, we welcome that sort of development because guess what? Nobody's got these redevelopments happen with particular projects. So 4541, like we saw at 1930, or we will see at 1930 AD Avenue, city planning asked them to rezone the other parcels, the private homes there. And at no benefit to them, they said, okay. We had this conversation three years ago with the Enclave Project on 241st Street. There is no difference between the Enclave Project that we supported as a community board and this project, other than the chairman of this board has been leading the cause to be anti-development. And it's, it's really heartbreaking because you're condemning that community. Because guess what? Nobody's going to voluntarily rezone that until another development project comes along. And the, the final thing that I'll say is we are advisory. This is going to go for the city council. They're going to say yes. And everything and conversation that you had here will be noted, but they're going to disregard it. And if you continue on this path, they're going to continue to say, you know what? Don't go to community board 12. Every project that we've had in my six years, we have supported. And in the last two years under this current leadership, we even said no. We didn't say no to a homeless, uh, to a homeless shelter, to uh, Wakefield Grace Baptist Church with senior housing. But that had to go through. They had to jump through hoops in order to get us to say yes. And it was only until I had to say, have a conversation like this. I shouldn't have to have this conversation. You need to vote your conscience. I'm going to support your vote. I'm going to go to Councilman Dinowitz and I'm going to say Community Board 12 voted no. Why did we vote no? I have no idea. We don't support affordable housing. We're anti-development. We want more homeless so, Okay, uh, George, thank Carla. you for sharing that. This is Carla. Carla. Yes, please. I, I just didn't know that the option was if we didn't want a huge building with no more inadequate parking, it was going to become a homeless shelter. Like, well, what am I missing? Where, where, where am I not reading? Yeah, Carla, you've been on the board for a number of years. I shouldn't have to explain this to yeah. you. Yeah, 15 years. If you don't know that homeless shelters are built in M11 districts, we have two, we have two homeless shelters. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I need to explain that to you. I forget the address, but there's one one block away from this on Furman Avenue. And then there's 1591 East 233rd Street, which is the old Imperial Milk Factory. We had these conversations in committee. You know, you guys have to be mindful about what we're asking for. This is a beautiful building right across the street from the MTA rail yard. And you're saying no. Again, I will support you. But Councilman Dinowitz's office, I will bet you, I'll bet you anything that they will say yes to this project. And again, moving forward, any project that comes before us, HPD, and all these other people will say, yeah, you know what? You have to go before the community board, but don't pay them no mind because they're anti-development. They're not honest brokers and having conversations and they don't know anything about zoning. I mean, again, we've had no, so, George, we're not anti-development. I guess I'm looking for guidance from you about where I should be doing more research because obviously mm, – there's more information out there than I know about. Please provide some guidance. Carly, no, no, Bert, she asked me to provide guidance. I'm going to provide guidance. And I'm going to move forward because, you know, and I'm going to address something and move forward with our next vote. Continue, sir, please, sir. Yes, thank you. I'd like to be recognized, please. I'm sorry? My hand was up after you're done. I'd like to be recognized. Sure. Uh, that's the address, too, and then, and then I'm going to move forward. We live in the city of New York. How many buildings are you aware of that have parking? Again, you're hanging. Your, this, is an, this is an Ella project 
This is an affordable housing project. Many of the tenants that will move into this project will not have vehicles. Not true. Carl, you're a whole, you, I'm not even going to address that. Not true. Because look at, I think about even the fact that, for example, I live on Murdoch and 233rd. And at one point when I was younger, there was plenty of parking on the block. And now you can barely park because there's so many renters. Think I, I even think about how you, if you go to Edenwall, for example, that's the projects. And why, And to just, just to go and get a vaccine at the community center is hell and high water to find a parking spot. People would double, triple parking in that area. That's... Look, I, listen, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm a native New Yorker. I live in Co-op City. You don't have to b- talk to me about parking. Parking is a challenge. I understand that. But that's also a testament to how well everybody's doing. Everybody tells you how they're not doing so well, yet you have families. One household will have three or four cars. So, again, parking for building, this is a affordable housing project. You heard them. Rental rates are start at the low end, and then you have a based on income. Again, I, I, I don't want to belabor this point. I'm just saying you have to be very careful. You're you're not rezoning this block. We have a homeless shelter one block away. We have a city administration that is intent on building more. So it's just a fair warning. Blasio says several Blasio's gone. So let let me go to three questions and move forward because I'm on. I'm I'm, you know what I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna anyway. Beatrice? Sorry, I do. I do hey, have can a point. I, say something? I'm sorry. I, I got you. I got you, Denise. I, I got you, Ms. Bond. I got you. you. Know where was this information shared? Because to be honest with you, my vote would have been different. Where was it shared that I missed all this information you just shared? At the <laughs> land use hearing we had before the meeting. Yeah, the one where it was a public hearing. And it was no. Like- yes. No, 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 dude. No, she's talking about the one before that. <laughs> yes, we we've had conversations. This came back. This came to us in October of 2019. They've also been to us a, a number of times. So again, it, it, you know, when the first time they came here, we were Carl Stricker was very supportive, liked the building and everything. Now we're voting against these projects, and again, I think it's because we have people that are poisoning the well. I think that that's unfair. And the thing is, should have been shared in the recommendations. No, no, no. But Beatrice, that is your responsibility. That's the problem here. But I'll be honest with you. Us, finish, please. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me. A lot of time going back and forth that important information is missed. Okay, Beatrice, so you got to agree with you. You got the floor. Beatrice, what was your what was your part, Matt? My concern is that we we waste so much information going back and forth, sometimes in irrelevant things that important information is missed. Had I known this, my vote would have been different. Okay. Mrs. Bond? I think that, um, George, you're chastising us for something that, you know what, we're not experts here. We are volunteering our time and we are trying to learn. So yes, indeed, I agree with you that if something was missed, then why why take the vote prior to sharing that information about the rezoning part of it? Because I mean, Alfredo, I'm sure is informed. He knows, you know, but the rest of us maybe we're naive, maybe we don't understand it all. So it would have been great to have that information prior to the vote instead of giving us the information after the vote and then chastising us. Denise, I'm not chastising you. We had this conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you how I received it. How your intent and I how understand. Is two different things. Thank you. Listen, I, we. This is a conversation we've had multiple times. I again, I don't make excuses for myself, and I don't make excuses for you. You join the community board. Our first responsibility is planning and zoning. This is your personal responsibility. If you have questions, you raise it during the land use meeting. That is where we have these debates. This item has been before the land use committee no less than four times. If you were curious, and we debated these issues. So, and I raised these issues. 
I, 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 I even said it in the public hearing that I support. I think, that was support. I think you're missing the point. What I'm saying is if these were the concerns to say it prior to the vote, don't let us go and vote and then not bring this to our, refresh our memories or bring it to our attention again is what I'm saying. Ms. Blair. Okay. <laughs> Um, my final um, thing about this uh, this project um, is, as I said in the chat, one, I think that as a, a board, I think regardless of our vote on this project, I think we can all agree that all of us are tired of bargaining with both the city and developers trying to come into the community, um, trying to develop things, and then we get left with the short end of the stick from both parties. Um, secondly, to um, back to the kind of parking situation, there are plenty of affordable um, housing buildings being built all across the Bronx. Um, I've been on the mailing list for all these properties that pop up everywhere, not even only in the Bronx, but in the entire city and every, and a good chunk of them, I'm not going to say every every single one, but a good chunk of them are built with some kind of underground parking or parking on the lower level. Why is it that developers are coming into the community? I'm not against affordable housing. I don't think any of us are against affordable housing. But it's frustrating that we see the parking situation. We see that COVID has... Um, scared people into buying used cars. Used cars are being, are, you know, a hot commodity right now because people don't want to take the subway anymore. The MTA is advertising to us to tell us to get out of our cars and back into their buses and subways and whatever the case may be because people have been driving more. Lots more people own cars. And whether or not we want to admit it, plenty of people in New York City have cars whether or not they can afford them. The least we can offer them as a board is somewhere to park them. Let me let me close this off. I mean, I see a couple people. I see Lisa, I, you have your hands up, and I want to I want to say something right quick in there because we need to move on. So, Lisa, you had your hand up. I see the senator. Senator, if you can hold off because we were going to come to elected officials, but I kind of want to give you. And I see Ursula's got her hand up. So let me let me just address something right quick. You know, look, you know. So I've been attacked as, as usual, right? So it seems like I'm always under attack from somebody. And something. So let me just clear. First of all, I'm a man, right? And so I can I can say this for I can speak for myself. I don't need anybody speaking for me saying this is what I am. To suggest that I am anti-development, clearly you've not been paying attention to the meetings because all of our meetings are, are are taped, right? What I am is for the type of development that we have. So I'm also a big thing about communication, right? So I'm not going to sit up here and try to, I said, vote your conscience is what I said. So, you know, again, say what you want. You know, as I said, you make your decision, right? So my thing is this, don't come after the fact, because again, we are the community board. We're the ones who get to say what we feel, right? Not what George feels, not what Dr. Burke feels, not what anybody feels. You vote how you feel. All right. And that's what happened. Right. We voted how we feel. And that's why when George says what he says at the meetings, I listen because I'm looking for guidance. Right. Same thing with Alfredo. If you remember at the what, last meeting, Alfredo said, I apologize for taking so long. I was like, no, we need people like you to ask the questions so that we can make an informed decision. And I said that. Right. For all those of you that were at that meeting, I said that. So now to sit up here. And hear what you just heard is disingenuous by the person who said it. But that's another topic for another day. My thing is this. So, again, I don't need anybody speaking for me. I can speak for my dog on self. That's the first thing. The second thing is, again, all I'm saying to you, board members, is whether you approve a project or whether you do not approve a project. My thing is, 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 is as Beatrice said initially, is to be informed. Right. Communication is the key. Communication is the key. So one of the things of which I have not done an effective job of this year, if you remember, I used to communicate with you almost every week, right? But again, that A got to be a little tiring and B, I got felt that, um, you know, I have other things to do. So to that end, it's all about communication because I've always been transparent despite what some of people will have you think, right? I've always been transparent about what you, um, the, what I bring to the board. And if you notice, whenever I give a presentation, I always give 
the citation where you can find it. Even in my reports, I give the citations where you can find it, right? So I don't want you to just take what I say or Mr. Stricker says or anybody else says is for you to do the homework and obviously and ask the questions. And so I don't want to hear that crap about, you know, I'm anti-development because that's not a true statement at all. And I yield back. So, Ms. Hayes, Senator, I know you want to say something, Ursula, and we need to move forward because this is taking too long. It's 920 and we want to table most of the, the meeting. Uh, Ms. Hayes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so respectfully, I appreciate all the comments, George, George included. I do want to say um, not that I believe I believe parking is every whatever your issue is or how you feel about it to each his own. What I will say is that what was more concerned for me are the youth that may be put in the buildings and the extremely high classroom sizes that are in the surrounding areas. And so in the schools. Right. So like 78. What? Um, PS43, like the schools that are in our areas are having really high class sizes because there's not enough teachers. And unfortunately, while we see a lot of development, I'm not seeing as many schools, right? And there's not being, the children are not being supported. If I know there's a lot of programs and things, but they're not being supported. And so before I jump out and vote and I do appreciate the information and you're absolutely right. We all have to do more homework, myself included, but I I do want to take into consideration the youth that are there or around and who may or may not be getting the proper education because there's not enough to go around. Thank you. Senator, you're a little early, but feel free. You want to chime in? Yes, please. Um, I am happy to, first of all, good evening. And you all have more stamina than I have. So that's incredible. And it is an important dialogue to have. So what I'm, what I'm just offering here is that we are happy as an office to do a, an information session with the city or partner with our council members, even council member Riley's office. We can, we can make it happen so that there's information that's like readily available about whether it's zoning, housing, like whatever these issues are, we can do that. I just want to be also clear that um, th a lot of these issues, absolutely, as Ms. Hayes just mentioned, they they overlap with one another in a way that means that we can't take care of one thing without taking care of the other. And housing is like one of the most important issues of our generation because the younger generation is going to literally have nowhere to live. And I, I mean this wholeheartedly. A lot of cities across the country are changing their zoning laws at the state level, city level too, but at the state level where it matters the most because it has the most impact, to be able to build housing and also to legalize certain units like accessory dwelling units so that when we think about like rent going up, it was the highest it's been in New York City ever in December, which is ridiculous. Like the way that we can get at this problem is by having more housing. We can go into the issue of parking anytime, any day, happy to. I think our city actually has a right or has a has an obligation to provide adequate transportation. And hopefully with the federal money that we get, we will be able to finally do that so that our subways and buses are at the standard that we all deserve because it matters about whether or not somebody decides to go and use it versus buying a used car. So I hear all of that. Um, but anyway, the point is, I just want to make my voice heard on this issue because um, it's, a, it's a huge problem. It's also part of the reason why... Um, people become homeless and then unfortunately are forced to live in shelters. And so I, as an office and my office and my team are happy to put together, whether it is a webinar that can be shared amongst the community boards or just to serve as a resource for that, for this particular time, we want to be helpful here. And I have to just also share one final thing, which is that um, there is so much information at every level of government. And sometimes it is overwhelming even for me. So if you feel like you don't know everything, you will never know everything about everything. It's just like never going to happen. But I think that there are, are ways for us in government to make the information 
more easily accessible and also just like consolidated so that it's like a cheat sheet you can go to and then refer to it when you have questions and you don't have to feel like you don't know because that's the worst feeling in the world to not realize that there was information that you needed to make a really important decision. So the point I'm just trying to make is that housing is so critical to the future of our city and state. We're here as a resource. We're happy to partner with anybody who wants to partner with us and we'll make things easier for all of you. Like that's our job. So like we should make it easier for you. Um, any of the other updates I have, I'm going to put them in the chat so that I don't have to say anything else tonight. So that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Senator. We appreciate you. Ursula? I, I don't know because it is a headache, but maybe you guys who got your resource book, we, we provided you with a zoning book. And also, I, I always send out the information from city planning when they give their uh, workshops. And I know that I send out a lot of information and if it's too much for you just ask me to just put you on the agenda list that way you won't get everything but it's very important to look through the the handbook that we get you guys for the, the new members you uh i don't think you personally you're breaking up you, you're breaking up have these workshops you really well, just saying, when city planning have the workshops, can you hear me? Yeah, you're breaking up. You were kind of in and out. Sorry. When city planning have the workshops, you guys really should attend. And if you don't have the zoning uh, handbook, stop by the office. Okay. So I don't know if, if that's the issue or not. I, I think that most of the people that went to the meetings, you know, um, do that went to those land use meetings went to be informed and again all of the information to the district manager's credit is posted on the youtube channel so even if like for instance i missed alfredo's meeting uh, and i apologize to you my brother i missed his meeting this past monday but i plan on watching it um a little bit later on when i get some time so look the bottom line is, is that the community board voted and if the councilman has a different opinion, then it's his job. If he decides to do that, then it's going to be his job to explain it to us. And just like he does Wakefield meetings or the other uh, taxpayer meetings, then he can come to us and explain it. We are, you're right, we are advisory, right? So we do not have the final say, but we at least put, based on the information that we had at the time, this is how we voted, and I'm comfortable with it, and I'm ready to move on. So let's move on to the next topic. Mr. Stricker? Yeah, Joyce, by the way, thank you for the lecture. The next uh, thing on the agenda is ULERP number Nancy 210392 Zebra Zebra X-ray. A zoning map and text amendment from an R4 to an R6B with an MIH to facilitate a two-story building at 14,264 square feet daycare center community facility. It, this is being sought by Centerland Realty at, at, at 1930 AD Avenue. Well, this was discussed and it, it would be basically logical to give them the zoning change because they are cutting down the height of the building in the back by two feet to conform with the R6B. But the only thing that I see, that might, and also they were asked by city planning to uh, upgrade the zoning for the three privately held buildings next door to them because they're all illegally, illegal height for the zoning. So, we're bringing it to you. The daycare facility is definitely necessary in this community. And it's being run by a fine organization. The key is, do we want to approve the 6B, R6B upgrade? Because once we give it to them, it's there. And, and maybe 
know, if God forbid, 10 years from now, they decide to tear down the daycare center, they could put up a tall building. I, I like to see some restriction on on the R6B, stating that if, if the usage of the building changes, it reverts back to an R4. And uh, otherwise, I don't see an issue with giving them the six feet. As far as the three adjoining houses, it would be nice to include them in it. But the point is, it's, none of them have a CFO. And I, I think they each one that if they want to conform to what is necessary, they will have to go for their own upgrade of zoning for their particular building. Um, that's my opinion. You, know, you don't have to agree with me or disagree with me. The point is, do we only want to do uh, the change for the daycare center, or do we want to include the two adjoining buildings? And that's going to be up to the board. And do we want to put a restriction? Once, if the daycare center ever leaves there, which I don't see it happening because the, the population is growing in the valley, uh, that will be very back to an R4. So that's my recommendation. So before, well, that's your personal recommendation, right? So that's yeah, right. But the, the right, board, okay. the board, right. but the board didn't make a decision. We're giving it to them. I'm just yes. telling what options they have. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, again, you know, so I see uh, this man has his hand up, so I'm gonna recognize that. So th again, that's what we always say. This is about what you feel based on the information that you have in front of you. So with that being said, uh, George. Uh, just by show of hands, I know there's two other hands up, but does everybody understand what you're voting for? We have the applicant here. We had the public hearing before it. Is there any questions? Is anybody confused about what we're gonna vote for? By show of hands, because this is your opportunity. If you don't know what we're voting for, you raise your hand and you ask the question. I have a question. Who's that? We have hands up, so we, we go in order. I'm Ivan, sorry. I'll, I'll raise wait. your hand, I'll Ivan. I'll wait. Right. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so Ted James had his hand up first, and then I saw it when Mrs. Bond took hers down. No, so, my hand is up. My hand is up. Okay, okay so okay, so uh, Ted, I, saw, I recognize his first, then yours, then I see the uh, attorney, Attorney LaBelle, and then Mr. Boris. So my question was in the chat and it never got answered. The question was, what is preventing the developers from establishing a daycare without getting a, a zone change? It is there now, but it's illegal. No, Mr. Strickland. Yeah, but the, the, daycare, the daycare yeah. is not currently there. So I'm saying... Can they just open the daycare without getting a zone change? I'm happy to answer that question, uh, Chair, at your discretion. Certainly. Okay, sure. Uh, hi, Richard Lobel for the applicant. Um, so there, the building which was originally built prior to, to these owners uh, back in 1985 to uh, 87 to 95 was enlarged and is in violation of uh, yards. So the front yard, uh, the side yard and uh, the roof is too tall. So um, they can't take advantage of this building. They would have to take, they would have to reduce this building to be complying under the R4. For the uh, proposed zone change, the R6B, the, um, all they have to do is reduce the size of that building. It doesn't have that same yard requirement. Uh, with regards to the height, as, mis as, as Mr. Stricker mentioned, uh, the applicant has offered uh, to sign a restrictive declaration capping the height at three stories so it wouldn't exceed buildings in the area. So again, just to summarize, we cap the height and um, and the building would be ready for St. Gemuel, which is a local uh, daycare facility already operating in in, uh, in the Bronx. Uh, it would be ready to move in in September. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. LaBelle. Uh, Mr. Boris? My question is, um, why, it, with all with all due respect to the land use committee, why, under the direction of um, of our current chair, Dr. Michael Burke, why is the land use committee's uh, um, recommendation different 
than the land use committee's chair. No, we didn't make a recommendation. We're letting the board decide what they want to do. I just told you what the facts of the thing is. Do, do you want to just give it to the daycare center? Because they did offer to take two feet off the back roof to meet the guidelines of the new R6B. And they also offered to uh, make the three buildings next door to it legal by having those buildings zoned the same way. And all I said, my opinion is, you know, as far as the daycare center goes, I don't see an issue with it, but I see an issue with them upzoning the three adjoining buildings because all those three buildings are illegal. Again, for, for, for sake of clarity in my question, why hasn't the land use committee come to a consensus on this on this um, recommendation. Let me answer that. So the reason is because we had um, meetings regard regarding this and the land use committee had to have a public hearing before they could make a recommendation. So they couldn't make a recommendation without the public hearing because they wanted to hear from the public. Therefore, being that also this has to be voted on prior to February 22nd, which is when the deadline is, Therefore, in the next land use committee meeting comes before then, a committee recommendation would have to come before the board. Our next general board meeting would not be until February the 24th, which would mean that we would miss the negative. So therefore, we brought it directly to the board. Thank you, Chair. Not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Boris. Yes, Mr. Alfredo. Hi, everybody. Um, this is for the board members. Just like um, George was saying, if you guys don't understand what's happening here and you need more clarification regarding this particular vote, please ask now. So I have a question. I couldn't get my hand raised. This is Michelle Bromfield. Uh, I see Ms. Bromfield. What's your question? So um, there was a Mr. Stricker had a, a clause to the to our, before we like yes. we were voting. Are we saying that when it's time for us to vote, what he asks for that if the daycare or whatever it is that will go in that building is not uh, is discontinued, would it be would would there be something else that could go in that neighborhood, a hotel or whatever it is that they would want to change the building to in our vote? Would that be included? What, what? what I, well, you let me answer that. Yeah, let me if the daycare center, which we which I don't believe will ever go out of business because we need it for our children, is that if they close and then a, a larger size building can be put there. A, apartment, small apartment house or more uh, three family houses or whatever, which would equal the three illegal buildings out next door to them. Right. So my question is, when we vote, is that going to be part of the voting? Well, I well, my recommendation is, and it's only mine, it's not the committee's recommendation, is that we put a, 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 a amendment to it is that we approve the 6B for the, for the daycare center, which is definitely required in that community. But if they ever move out, it reverts back to an R4. Okay, so when the motion is going to be made, is that going to be the additional part to it? That's my question prior to voting. Well, it depends on who makes the motion. I, I, I can't make the motion. That's the come from the floor or somebody from the land use committee. I mean, when, when, the, when, the, when, when the motion is made, then you have to make a, a decision whether you agree with the motion or disagree with it. Mrs. Bond? Yes. So just to be clear, when we make the motion, if we want to make sure that we have that caveat in there that this is only going to be for the um, daycare center, then we have to state it in the motion clearly. Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. And, and it, will be, it will be right back to the R4, the present zoning. Okay. Ms. Benitez? 
And wait, one more thing. And so that okay. doesn't, and that would not include the other buildings, just the building. No, we're just, I'm not including the other three buildings. Okay, thank you. So let me let me ask a follow up question. So that means that the other three buildings would then, if you upzone, will be R six, correct? No, no, I'm look. It's up to the board if they want to upgrade the other three buildings. I'm against it, but no, that's I mean, only I'm, my I'm, focus. I'm, we're, we're asking for clarity, Mr. Stricker, because again, I think that's what we have not been getting. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and that's what we're trying to get. I'm now. only talking about I'm talking about the daycare center because no, that's I'm essential. To, that's essential to the valley. Yes. All right. They need it. The valley is growing. There's a lot more young children being born that needs daycare. And that's a perfect location for it. That's why I have no issue with upzoning it from R4 to R6B. But if the daycare center ever chooses to leave, which I think is a one shot in a million, then it would be, uh, be right back to the R4. I do, uh, and the only reason the developer included the three buildings adjacent to it is, was that they requested the city planning to make those three buildings legal. So, so my, I'm sorry. So then my question is that when we vote, because of this request, are we going to be putting that in with this vote or not? No. Well, we, that was an addition of the. Let me explain something. The developer for the uh, daycare center was asked by city planning if he would include those two buildings, three buildings, in his up zoning. And I believe they should up zone their own buildings. And so only not, we, so, we should only vote for the daycare center. So we're not honoring the request from city planning. Not a, not on my side, but I mean, if you guys want to do that, that's strictly up to you. That's why we brought it to the full board. Okay. So, uh, um, Alfredo, Alfredo, I'm sorry. Could you could you speak to maybe the understand your the under your understanding about the other buildings? Yeah, that that's why I have my hand raised. Sorry if I'm cutting anybody okay. off, but I just want I don't I don't want what happened in the previous vote to happen here, and that's why I ask everyone if y'all do not understand. What are we voting? No disrespect to the chair. Raise your hand so we can clarify. I could clarify it based on my experience. All right. So the whole purpose of them coming to us is that these developers bought this property, a non-compliant property that is that was overbuilt, practically illegal, with a lot of violations. They someone else prior to the architect they have now filed an application with the Department of Buildings. That application was given objections. Those objections were never satisfied. The borough commissioner at the time, Mr. Defoe Warner, clearly stated that they wanted the owners of the property then to go to the BSA, not the city planning, to BSA, to get a BSA approval or denial. So what Mr. Lobel is trying to do, he's trying to come in and try to request a rezoning from an R4A, which is only put with from a, from an R2 from an R4, which is only permitted to have one and two family homes to an R6B. R6B, you could build a uh, more than three family home, three families and better. So what we're saying is that me personally, I have me personally. And that's uh, this is my own opinion. I don't have no problem with them doing the rezoning I, I would prefer for them to go to the board but mr labelle said that from his experience that the board is going to deny so they don't want to go that route they want to go the other route which i'm going to which he's he he seems or he's he's seen that could get done which is the rezoning but only rezoning that particular block and lot and what i requested and this was just my opinion was for a restrict a restrictive declaration be be prepared by attorneys and submitted to the county clerk's office stating that at no point where this now tomorrow next year's 10 years is this property ever to is going to ever be developed for nothing but what we approved what, what we are approving it for and also i want that notation on the certificate of occupancy so again 
that's my recommendation. That's how I'm seeing it. If you guys understand what I'm saying, cool. If y'all don't find Mr. The, the, Mr. Stricker said what he had to say, I'm just giving y'all my opinion. Just remember what happened in the last vote that we just took. And remember this year, this rezoning only should be for their block and lot, not for nobody else's block and lots. Excuse me, Alfredo. Hold on, Carl. Hold on, Carl. Yeah, Lisa. Could you make the motion then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just want to explain like that everybody can understand a little bit more. Yes. What I mean? So me, Alfredo Figueroa, and only I hereby make a recommendation for this application to be approved with the conditions that it will only pertain to this particular block and lot, no adjoining, no adjoining lots, and that a restrictive declaration be prepared and submitted to the county clerk's office and recorded and available in ACRIS for everyone to see, and a notation be put on the certificate of occupancy that this property is not to be developed or used for any other use except for this for its for its intended use that we are going to approve it for, which is a community facility and no other uses. That needs to be clearly stated on the certificate of occupancy. Like that, if these developers were to sell this property tomorrow, and they and they kick out the lady, the the doctor that that wants to utilize it as a as a as a daycare, they could um, either knock the building down or add two or three more stories to that building. And then the whole valley is going to be disconfigurated. That's my motion. Either y'all say yes to this motion or yes or nay. That's just my opinion. Well, let's get a second because I I yes. agree with you. Can I, I definitely second agree with you. Yes, I think, that's, I think that's what the board needed to hear. A second. Hang on. We still have some questions. So the motion's been... Okay, so Alfredo, you made the motion. Mrs. Bond seconded it. I still have George has got his hand up, and I see uh, Ms. Toronto has her hand up. George. No, no, uh, De Deborah had her hand up first. Go ahead, Deborah. Deborah. Okay, so my question is, good evening, everyone. What are the three buildings next to it? Why do they want the zoning change for them? And what because are they're they? Illegal. Are they housing? They're, they're illegal. Legal heights. They're, they're legal non-conforming. They okay. they're overbuilt. They legal non-conforming structures that were. No, no, they're legal non-conforming structures. City planning asked these guys to do it, and again, they're legalizing a, a, an illegal thing or a, a non-conforming thing because zoning changes over the course of years. So, for example, uh, Alfredo mentioned before that he has a project where it's a legal non-conforming and they want to do what their neighbors did and all this other nonsense. The question becomes, do you grant them that? Z rezonings are expensive. They're timely processes. They usually take several months. Again, these guys are footing the bill. We're doing a favor to homeowners. I don't see anything negative about that uh, again, I, I'm not. You can vote whichever way you want, but there is a diff the the flip side of that story is the reason you don't rezone it or you don't give them that permission is because in the future, and again, let's everybody knows you know what brownstone Brooklyn looks like, right? All right, that's what an R six B. If anybody has a rezoning handbook in front of them, which is the orange book, if you look up the R six B, that is what. R6B looks like. Yes, thank you, Dr. Burke. If you go to it, it, it gives you certain parts of the city of what it is. We're not talking about five story. Well, in this case, in MIH, you can build up to a 55 tall building um, that would have a setback. Again, this all gets very technical. It's better explained in the zoning handbook. Please refer to it. Um, but that's the thing that, that you have to consider. And there's trade offs. If we vote against it, then we don't get like the trees removed from the middle of the road, which is my personal pet peeve. We're doing the same thing right now with the storage facility, which is further down the block. It's on Grace Avenue. They're building out the sidewalk and the street. If we grant this rezoning, they have to build out the sidewalk and the street. 
remove those trees, remove that utility pole, remove the unsightly things that are going on. So there's trade-offs to either way that you vote. So again, you're, you're excluding what Alfredo is proposing is an exclusion of the private homes from the rezoning and what else? And a restrictive declaration, which will be recorded with the county clerk's office that you're saying Alfredo forever, or are we saying until the block gets rezoned? I mean, ever the block gets rezoned, I don't see it getting rezoned. But if it ever gets rezoned, then that's something different. They're going to come back to it. I just feel right now, right now, I think, yeah. me personally, I'll feel comfortable. You you know my, my thought from this. I wanted them to go to the board. Doc, you know, um, Mr. LaBelle saying that. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Not to cut you off, Alfredo. But, again, this is to the prior conversation. Every board member received the response from BSA and from, uh, what was the last one, Alfredo? Um, in green. What was the one that we, we got the, I sent that I'm forgetting now. You, uh, you I sent you the response. That and you sent Mr. LaBelle's response. Yes. On the, thank you. Yes. On the restrictive declaration. So again, this was incumbent upon board members reading what those responses are because we explored this. We brought it to committee. We're, we're bringing it again now. You know, this is all the stuff you have to absorb. This is your responsibility. This is what you have to understand. So, you know, you have to vote, as Dr. Burke says, you're conscious, but it, they're trade-offs. Do you do this or do you not do this? And how, if you do do it, do you put the restrictive declaration in? And quite frankly, I, I don't know if this is a negotiation. Richard LaBelle will, will tell us we can put these provisions in, but they may not fly. So what is the response if we do this for perpetuity that you never get to do that? You never get to uh, change the, uh, the daycare center. Uh, um, may I answer, Chair? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Um, the, you know, the, the, when this was me mentioned um, by Mr. Figueroa in the, uh, in the land use committee, um, we said we'd be, you know, we, we've actually already prepared a draft restricted declaration. Uh, we also gave evidence. We showed that we've done this before February 2021. So 11 months ago, we entered into a similar restrictive declaration. It was Community Board 12 in Queens. And um, so uh, there's two things I would note. The first is that uh, there's a paragraph in there which basically says that um, in the event that the block is rezoned, like by city planning or by the community board and the surrounding areas rezoned, then you know this that the restrictive declaration would go away because if for some reason in 20 years uh, the valley felt that they wanted their zoning, their zoning to change, then it wouldn't you know it wouldn't make sense to keep this property as it was. So that's the first paragraph. That's a standard paragraph. The second one was you know frankly like we're happy to enter into the restricted declaration. Ron and Michael were on the phone. Uh, developed multiple daycare facilities. St. Gemmawell, which is a local Fordham Park and Bronx uh, institution, is a wonderful institution. We're happy to enter the restrictive deck. We were our request only was that instead of like we would we would be happy to we would be happy if we could cap the height at three stories, which is you know in, in is similar to the to the buildings in the area. But again, honestly, we understand it's a community board. You vote the way you vote, but that declaration would be recorded against the property, would show up in title, and and would be there for perpetuity. Thank you. And the and my final question: the three private homes. Does that can we amend the ULERP to exclude the three private homes? So um, uh, I will tell you that the last rezoning that we did in the Bronx, which was the Williamsburg Williamsbridge uh, Road rezoning that was in Bronx Community Board 11, uh, the community board requested that, and it's a coincidence, but that there were three uh, single family homes that they requested be removed from that rezoning and they were removed from the rezoning. So uh, so the bottom line is that uh, at, that the, uh, city planning and the council both have the authority to reduce the size of rezoning. So, so if the board so recommended, uh, the you know this they could do so. Alfredo, what's your take on this? I mean, again, just this is my my personal opinion. Um, I agree that if ever that particular section of the valley gets rezoned then yes then that restrictive declaration can be voided i doubt that it's going to get rezoned 
at least no time soon. But um, definitely, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. At least they're coming with at least they're coming back to us with something. You know what I mean? So we got. I kind of wish that this had been fleshed out in committee, Mr. Lobel, when we talked about this two weeks ago, and then we, we wouldn't be talking. This is what ten o'clock, and I haven't even got to my elected officials yet. So um, I think this should have been done in committee. Um, and you know, it, it is what it is. So does everybody need to hear? Um, I'm ready to call for the vote. So does everybody need to hear from Mr. Alfredo restate the motion, or does everybody understand the motion? I understand it. So just make sure that you all write it for us in the office, George, and Ursula. That's all okay. I ask of you. So. All right, so the motion has been moved and properly seconded and hearing no other unreadiness and ready to call for the vote. Are there any other questions? Madam Secretary? Judith Benitez, aye. E. Jerry Bennett? Aye. Sydney Blair? Aye. Sydney Blair? Aye. Denise Bond? She said aye, Judy. I heard her. Thank you. Aye. Thank you, Denise. Ivan Boris? With the understanding and recommendation from Mr. Alfredo, aye. Carla Basadi? Aye. Michelle um, Brumfield? Aye. Marlene Allen? Yes. Victor Brown? Sadie Campbell? Aye. Joan Claude? Aye. Beatrice Cornell? Aye. Tolene Dickerson? Aye. Kason Dubois? Aye. Aye. Kevin Ackerberger? Aye. Alfredo Figueroa? I with the recommendation that I said that I said. Yeah, that, I got it. I got it. Thank you. That's my Hannah. opinion. Only. Yeah, Polly. Anna. Are you still with us? She may have had to go, Miss Benitez, because I, I told her that, you know, being that, you know, she is who she is. I told her that she had to go. She had to go. So okay. no problem. I excused her for the rest of the meeting. OK. Um, Barbara Gibson. Aye. Johnny Goff. Johnny Goff. <laughs> Robert Hall? Um, with the Alfredo addendum, aye. We got it. Lisa Hayes? Aye. Aye. Isaac? Aye. Theodore James? Aye. Teacher Martin? Aye. Alpha Lass? Paul Lanzano. Paul Lanzano. Whoops. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. John Manzanet. Okay, right here. Lucia Martin. Aye. Shaniqua Moore. Aye. Clinton Mike. Aye. Carmen Ortiz? Hi. Hi. Dina Robbins? Jessica Samboy? Aye. Harry Singh? Aye. Paul Stricker? Since, uh, since uh, Figueroa just changed the wording of my recommendation, I have to agree with him. Uh, Luke Sabados. Deborah Torado. 
Yes. Este Yema. And the eyes have it. Um, Deborah Toronto. Deborah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the last vote, you changed it from a um, abstain to an I. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The eyes have it. All right. Thank you. So the ULIP application passes. Thank you, Madam Secretary. You're so welcome. it's late. So here. You're muted. Thank you. I, I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm tired. So here's what I'm going to do. We still need to hear from our electors if they want to speak. We need to hear from Alexis. I'm tabling my report. You can read it. I've sent it out. You can read it. I don't know if George wants to comment on his. He can, but he sent it out. You can read it. We do. I say we do a, uh, a unanimous consent. Tolene's got to get the financials. And then if you don't mind, Madam Secretary, we table everything else. And I know Keisha and Sydney, you want to do the newsletter update. But we could table that until the next meeting, if you don't mind. That's fine. All right, so let's hear from our elected. So, um, and Cynthia, you've been here patiently waiting from Councilman Raleigh's office. I'm going to make it very quick. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Um, just going to leave our phone number for those that are on the phone. Our phone number is 718-684-5509. Our email is district12, that's district12, at council.nyc.gov. My personal email with the council is cprisco, C-P-R-I-S-C-O, at council.nyc.gov. And I'm just going to remark on one thing. We are having a event every Friday at 3369 Wilson Avenue from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. It is a food distribution done with the Love Apostolic Tabernacle and Shireen Hall at the Unity with Love Warehouse. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Frisco. Uh, anybody here from uh, Councilman Denowitz's office? Okay. Moving forward, Speaker Hasey's office. Assemblyman Denowitz's office. All right, Senator Biagi. I know Angela was here, but Senator Biagi spoke herself. I know someone was here from Senator Bailey's office. I don't know if she's still here. Nope. Okay. Uh, Nicholas, I didn't see him from Congressman Bowman's office. Um, I didn't see Mayor Lex or Erica from the DA's office. Are you ladies still there? I'm here. Hi, everyone. Good evening, Mayor Lex? Lex from the DA's Mayor Lex, office. I, I, you know, this is long. I apologize, Mayor Lex. I Happy New Year to you again. Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our office doesn't have any updates um, other than the... You know, in December, we just had our gun buyback within the confines of the 47th precinct, and we were able to collect 70 firearms, which is a good thing, less um, firearms in our streets. Um, we plan on doing more gun buybacks um, in the near future. So if anyone has any questions, concerns, I put my information in the chat. I'll put it in again. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mayor Lex. And Hopefully it won't be this long next time. Okay. Uh, Comptroller Brad Lander's office. Anybody from Mayor Eric Adams' office? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hall, you had your hand up? Uh, yes. I, I very quickly wanted to thank those who introduced uh, Carlos Torres from the DA's Crime Prevention Coordinator. Um, He's been very helpful with the NYCHA TA presidents. Um, I just met him, and uh, I believe uh, George and, and Ursula gave him our numbers. But uh, he's going to be a great resource to all of us. So I just wanted to thank you for that. All right. Yes, he's in our crime strategies unit. Um, yes. Yeah, it's I'll, very I'll good. Very good. The only problem I had with him is he went to Hayes and I'm from Mount, but that's uh, real good. <laughs> so I, I really want to thank him for coming aboard. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay. And, and no one is here from city planning, right? Okay, great. Alexis, you're up. Happy New Year to you. For, for the record, Happy New Hayes. Year, Dr. Berg. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. I heard somebody. Who was that? But that was just Clinton saying, for the record, I went to Hayes too. That's oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Alexis, Good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy. I 
really have missed you guys. It's been a while. I'm so happy to see all your faces. I'm sorry that you can't see mine. My camera is currently not working for whatever reason. Super odd. Um, but aside from that, I just want to say I hope that you're all doing well. Just some updates. The reappointment applications will be sent out by the end of this week. And they're due back March 4th. Um, and the applications for new board members are now online on the BP's website. Um, and if you are unable to access that, I can send it to you directly via email. Uh, and those are also due back March 4th. So if you know anybody that's interested in uh, participating on the board, please let them know uh, that the applications are now out. And that is all that I have for you guys tonight. I know that you guys are in a rush to get off. So thank you so much. Yeah, because I'm tabling the rest of this, uh, Alexa. Be <laughs> with you. So as far as my report, guys, you can read it. I'm not going to go into it. George? No, I um, please read it. Um, I think it, it explains uh, all the frustration. Um, and, that's, you know, it's 10 o'clock. We generally end around this time anyway. So it's not like we're, we're something this is new to us. But um, I think everything that you guys raised in today's meeting and in the previous meeting is in the report. Read it. There's a reason why there, there's a request for a reduction. Carl Stricker spoke to it in committees. There's a reason for term limits. There's a reason for all of these things. Those things need to be debated in committee. They need to be brought to committee. They need to be debated. And then they need to be voted on. And some of those things, we actually did vote on it. Um, and they passed. And we still didn't implement them. So again, read it, read the report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Email me back and, uh, you know, we'll get on with it. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we need to approve the minutes from the November meeting. Hopefully everybody that went out, um, I want to say either yesterday or today, um, I don't remember. So I'm going to ask for a unanimous motion for well, actually, I can't. I'm the chair. Um, so I need a, a motion of unanimous consent for the uh, approval of the board minutes. Let's question. Which month's uh, question? November. Thank you. There's a question on the floor. So yeah, move. Bar Barbara Gibson. Yes, Ms. Gibson. To Ms. Alexis, we need to send out a love and respect to Madam. Vanessa Gibson and being our new borough president since this is the beginning of the year. Thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Gibson. So the motion has been moved and properly seconded. Is there, um, are there any objections? So a motion of unanimous consent passes. Moving forward, Madam Treasurer. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> So I get to do the fun part at 10.08 p.m., and that's ask for some money. So we are currently at 18, yeah, I see you, Alfredo, laughing, at 18.49. That is our amount right now, $1,849. All of you wonderful folks who stepped up to the challenge. Some of you went, I mean, extremely over and above but I need everybody else to please show up and show out. Please send your $35 to the office by check or drop it off. Call the office first and make sure that someone's there. If not, my number is on the email. Call me. We'll make some arrangements. I don't know. We'll, a bird will send something, but I need, I need you to get that money in. Everybody be safe. Be blessed. All right. Thank you. So um, thank you, Madam Treasurer. So I move that we table items 9, 10, and 11 on the agenda until uh, next month. Is there, uh, you know, is there a second? Second. Okay. So call for the question. All those in okay. favor of said motion tabling those items on the agenda until next month, signify by saying aye. We have some unreadiness. We have unreadiness? Okay, where's unreadiness coming from? Ms. Ms. Benitez. It's from Ms. me. Benitez? Yeah. I have two two items, and one in particular needs to, it's a waiver, and they need the waiver for this month. They can't wait until next February after it's over. They have to have it now. 
So I need a, I need a recommendation for approval. Okay. Um, you want to describe it right quick, Ms. Benitez? It's, it's, it's just a simple waiver uh, to extend the time it takes for them to fill out an application. They don't have enough time to do it in this period. So they want to request a waiver from the SLA to extend that time beyond the February. So, Thank you. Well, hold on. That wasn't a motion made. She was just explaining the situation, Mr. I Trump. know, but I, 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 I so moved her mo uh, explanation. She said you need a, a, a motion to uh, waive the length of time for the license. I read my minutes. I know what she's talking about, so I moved it. No, I understand that, but I think it has to be. You're right, but it has to be in the form of a motion. If I'm, if I understand parliamentary, well, I make a motion to support the the economic development uh, recommendation to waive the time for the liquor license. Second, Robert Hall. Motion has been moved and properly seconded. Any more in readiness? Is this for both of them, Ms. Benitez? Yeah, we could do both of them. Very simple. Primrose is going up for a renewal, and they've been in, in this community since 1913. So um, we don't really have too many problems with them. And if we can do a request for a renewal, approval for a renewal, I'll appreciate that. And that's it for me. Okay. You wanna, so are you going to wrap it in the same motion, or are you going to yeah, make a separate motion? Same motion. Same we'll motion? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll so the motion? It Second it. The motion? Across the board. Motion's been moved and properly seconded. So put me down for an abstain. Uh, well, actually, no. Any, all those, I'm calling for a unanimous vote then. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll table the newsletter. We'll table the new business as well. Um, and so next. Uh, we need to vote on the, the code of conduct. Okay. All right. I, I don't see why that can't wait, but okay. Or well, is there any reason why we have to vote on it? Because we haven't moved on this item in a very long time, and there are people who are waiting for their stuff to be heard before the discipline committee, and we can't move forward until we adopt the code of conduct. We're not going to continue to put it off. Well, first of all, like I said, it's not, um, you know, I don't think anybody here did anything to try to, quote unquote, put it off, as you say, Mr. Torres. But okay, um, you know, we'll listen to that. Mr. Tricky, you want to comment on this? Yes, I'll, I'll just get, tell you what happened at the bylaws committee. Sure. All right. And this is for uh, what do they call the word? That everybody knows what exactly happened at the committee meeting. Uh, this this uh, request for the, excuse me, who's talking? Um, can you clarify, Mr. Stricker, what exactly happened at the committee? Well, meeting? I am going to tell you if the people behind who are talking are talking over me, and I don't appreciate it. What happened at the meeting, we took a vote on what was presented by Mr. Harry Zing and from a consensus of his committee that we approve the recommendation from them, which means we'll go exactly with what the rest of the boards that, they, that Harry took time to call and find out what they were doing. And he, he, he formed his recommendation after, after what they did. It was uh, presented to the bylaws committee. The initial vote was three nays, one abstention, and one yay. And then uh, Mr. Torres reminded us, and correctly so, I'm, I'm not objecting to him reminding us, that this has been hanging around since October 27th. 
and we're the only board in the borough that hasn't yet approved it. And this is something that uh, our late borough president, not late, I'm sorry, our previous borough president, Ruben Diaz, had wanted and his legal department. So in order to get this thing off the ground, we approved on what uh, Mr. Singh, the consensus of the committee of the disciplinary committee, we took a second vote, which was four yeas and one nay. So we're coming to the board tonight to ask them to approve the recommendation of the disciplinary committee and the bylaws committee that put this in the bylaws, the code of conduct. Alfredo? Yeah. Yeah. You had your hand up. Oh, no, no. I want to, I mean, I, I just want to talk on another topic. Can I just, I just want to just rate before I forget. So I don't know if everybody could see this. We're having, I'm going to assume a public hearing or subcommittee public hearing regarding Seymour Avenue. Is that, is that correct? But we're not finished taking a vote here. Uh, yeah, we got to finish. You got to finish this first, Alfredo, before okay, we no, no. talk about anything yeah. else. I, I just want to make sure that, that we say this, like that everybody that's on here knows that we're going to be talking about this. And this is very important that everybody is going to be on this committee meeting. Just saying that. Thank you. Can't we finish the report for the bylaws committee and so that we can get a vote on, on this code of conduct? Can someone make a motion to accept? Barbara, did you make the motion? Barbara Gibson. I did, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second? Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, so it's been passed and seconded. Now we have to take a vote on it. Okay. So okay. With that. I'm sorry. Who seconded the motion? I missed that. Ms. Benitez. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, we can either do one or two things. I recommend a roll call vote, but it's up to you. You can do, well, actually, no, because I already know what I, I personally think. But, um, you know, in order for me not to say anything, I think we need to call a roll call vote for this because this is going to the bylaws. It's very, very important. So we don't need to rush this. So let's make sure we get it right. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. I, I agree with, I agree with the chair. I think that we should um, really think this through before we vote on this, especially if we don't have a quorum. We have a quorum. Online right now. I would believe so. Is that correct, Judy? Yep. We have a quorum with the members that are on the board right now. Um, Ivan, would you let me do my job? Just and asking. Okay, thank you. Um, Judith Benitez, I. Ageria Bennett. I. Thank you, Ageria. Sydney Blair. I. Denise Bond. I. Ivan Boras. Nay. Paula Basadi. Nay. Michelle Bloomfield. Brumfield. I. Marlene Allen. Abstain. Victor Brown. Sadie Campbell. Aye. Joan Claude. Aye. Beatrice Coronel. Aye. Colleen Dickinson. Aye. Hazan Dubois. Abstain. Kevin Eichelberger. Aye. Alfredo Figueroa. Aye. 
Barbara Gibson? Aye. Johnny Goff? Robert Hall? Aye. Lisa Hayes? John Isaac? Aye. Theodore James? Aye. Keisha Martin? Aye. Masa Av? Well, she's not present anyway. Colin Zano? Aye. John, he's not present either. Lucille Martin? Lucille Martin? Shanika Moore? Aye. Clinton Mike? Aye. Carmen Ortiz? Aye. Dina Roberts, not present. Jessica Sandboy? Aye. Sat Harry Singh? Harry Singh? Paul Stricker? Aye. Looks that no, oh, he's not here either. Uh, Deborah Toronto? Aye. Esther Yemma? What I can see, the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Um, okay. Dr. Burke? So was there something? Was there somebody asked a question? For the record, my vote is no. Yeah, right. It's vague. That's what I'm asking. Vague, but that's my okay. opinion. Um, was there? Is there a um, question? I didn't have any question. Okay, I thought I heard. I thought I heard something. So, all right. So let's wrap this up. Good and welfare. So the eyes have it. All right. All right, so let's wrap this up. Good and welfare. So Ms. Carla Brasati had a birthday. Um, in fact, I want to say it was uh, on Sunday, but um, wish her happy birthday. Those are January birthdays that I'm aware of. Um, if there are any other January birthdays that I'm not aware of, then please let me know. Uh, Barbara Gibson, I'd like to say something. Okay, well, I'm not done yet, Ms. Gibson, and I know Alfredo wants to say something too. So um, additionally... Um, I also am unaware of any wedding anniversaries, but if there are any, uh, please, like I said, let me know. Um, Alfreda, you were talking about the um, meeting on Seymour Avenue. Can you go over that again? Again, I don't, I mean, I don't know if everyone's aware. I just, what I, I just don't want what happened earlier today to happen again. So again, um, this is going to be coming through the pipelines, 3350 Seymour Avenue. So everyone, please attend this meeting. If you have not gotten this email invite, just reach out to Urs or George. Um, I'm going to assume everyone is allowed to be in these subcommittee meetings. Yes. This is good. I just want to put it out here now like that. You know, if this, if this lingers for two or three years, that we don't have the same situation that happened, you know, in White Plains Road. So I just want everybody to know that eventually we're going to be having this and this is a very interesting situation. So everybody needs to be on the on these meetings for this. Thank you, guys. The invitation went out either this week or last week. I, I, I saw it, you know, flash across. So I think. Okay, so I mean, everybody got it. And I just okay. That's it. That's yeah, no, 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 no. It. it was it was sent out. It was sent out either this week or last week. I can't. Okay, I just want everybody to please attend. Please attend. This is a land use situation. Please attend. Very very important. Right. Right. So yeah, I think that. Um, you know, that definitely, you know, is the case because it's all about, you know, communication. And it's a lot of the stuff that we discussed tonight, we discussed again previously. So in those committee meetings. So, Mr. Isaac, I see what Ms. Gibson uh, wants to say something first, and then I'll recognize you. Good and welfare, Ms. Gibson. Oh, good evening, everyone. Barbara Gibson LeGrant. I want to thank everyone for voting on that discipline committee tonight. And I look forward to speaking more about it in the coming month of February. Thank you all. Okay. I just, um, this is John Isaac, I have a quick comment. You know, um, I heard that 
if we say no about something tonight, like we voted down that development, that still the councilman, he could decide to approve it. So why do we have to vote on it if he's gonna approve it? That's just a quick question. Because if we say no, how come in other communities, if the people in the community say no, why do other people get to say yes? That's just my thought on the whole thing, you know? Um, uh, uh, Dr. Burke, if I may, this is Robert Hall. Sure. I, I, it's been my experience, okay? Our job is to follow the city charter, and that is part of the ebb and flow of the city charter. What happens after that, from the higher powers, that is part of their ebb and flow, and it's, that's the way it is. And until that gets changed or re-legislated, that's the way it's stated. Now, that's what I've learned. I, and, Robert, you're correct. You're 100% correct. We're only advisory, and that's what the board has to remember. We can be overridden by the city council at any time they so desire. There it is. But at the same time, I think it's our job to hold our elected, you know, accountable. So I think that, you know, um, you know, to your question, uh, John, it's about, you know, again, what you know, what we want, because ultimately it's just like the community board, it's like the community members, they come to us asking for X, Y, and Z. And each one of us as an officer of being an officer in, in the community, is because that's what we are, we're responsible to the members at large. And so I think that's what, um, you know, we need to take from that. And so it's what, you know, we want. And again, um, it's for us to be informed as well, um, and I can go on and on, but I'm not because it's ten. It's it's way past when I want to get done, so I'm tired. So um, I'm ready. I need a motion for adjournment. If there's nothing else, so moved. Second. So motion has been moved and properly seconded. Um, is there any further in readiness before we call for the vote? Call for the vote. Okay. All those who are in favor of ending this meeting signify by saying aye. 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 This is Carla. Aye. Who, aye. who seconded? Robert Hall. Oh, okay. Thanks, Robert. Okay. All opposed have the same right? Meeting right. Aye. <laughs> meeting adjourned. So, Mr. Lanzano, are you still there? Mr. Lanzano? Yes. How are you doing? Um, can you close this out in closing prayer, please, sir? Certainly. Dear God, help this board do the right thing. The right thing being to improve the community, improve our standards of living, improving our way of life and improving the soul of our city. Amen. Amen. Nice, short, quick, and sweet and to the point. All right. So that is it, everybody. See you next month. Have a good next week. By the way, next week, libraries, cultural affairs meeting, health meets, environmental concerns meeting. So all of those meetings take place next week. So please make certain that you attend. So we're out. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you.